Hey everybody! Welcome back to My Green Pets. Long time no see. This is William Green. And I am going to do a full orchid collection update for you guys today. I know it's been a very long time since I've seen you. I've been doing other things, and, but still growing the orchids. So let's have a quick look around and see what's going on. First up are the Phalaenopsis. Most of them are in bloom. Some of them are in bud, but they all are doing pretty well. And this year I decided not to have them up in the green room. I brought them up into my little sunroom instead. And uh, it's very dry up here. The humidity is very low. And I wasn't quite sure how they would do, but they've actually done pretty well. All right, well there's not much more to see up here. Let's go down to the green room and check on the other orchids. As many of you guys remember from last year, the green room is an old coal room that's been converted into a grow room. And here are the green pets in their winter home. Let's start out by looking at what's in spike and what's in bloom, and then we'll kind of go around to everything else. This is Mormodia Jumbo World, and most of its flowers are already gone. They bloomed around Christmas, around the December 25th, and this is what's left so far. Um, it's done pretty well. This year it didn't have the greatest year. It only had two spikes, but it was divided in March as well. The plant was kind of split in half, and half of it was sold off. So we're hoping that next year things will look a little bit better for this plant. We're also just catching the end of the first flowers of Bulbophila medusae. It has put out three spikes at the same time, but there are many, many more on the way. Many of you know this is one of my favorite orchids. It only blooms for a short time, but they're so interesting and so different that that makes up for it. And this year, instead of all the flowers blooming at once, the plant's uh, kind of staggering its bloom, so it looks like we're going to have several more blooms to enjoy over the next few weeks. You might recognize these big leaves and fat green pseudobulbs as belonging to Bulbophyllum echinolabium. And you may remember that the plant was in this basket and you can see part of it is in there but actually I split this plant into five divisions uh, about a month ago and so you can kind of see they're kind of scattered around over here. The interesting thing is um, I split the plant while it was in bloom with three spikes and even after dividing it, it has continued to bloom. So that's great. Uh, so I actually have uh, the one that I'm going to keep, this larger division here, it's got two bloom spikes on it. You can see them there. And then this other large division, it's got four pseudobulbs and it's got a bloom spike on it as well. So when spring comes, guess what? Four of those divisions are going to be available for you guys if you are interested. Another plant that has me super excited is this, a slipper orchid from Central America. This is Phragmopedium grande. And I've had this plant since fall of 2014 and I've had all kinds of problems with rot but last year, I repotted the plant into rock wool with a top dressing of sphagnum moss. And I have the plant actually sitting in a tray of water. And since I've done that, it has taken off. It's got a new growth coming up here, and the plant has sent up a spike as well. So I can't wait for this to bloom. It's the first time that it's bloomed for me. And I have to say, I have Ed of Ed Orchids to thank for this because um, just watching his videos on slipper orchids and Phragmopedium culture have just kind of it not only educated me, but given me the courage to try some things that I, I wasn't really ready to try yet, and it looks like it's going to pay off. So thank you so much, Ed. Those beautiful pale green speckled leaves belong to Phalaenopsis schilleriana. And it's got a little spike on it, not quite as big as last year. Of course, last year it had four leaves, and this year it only has two leaves on it. So I'm um, hoping that it will grow a little bit bigger 
and uh, I'm not going to chop off the spike or anything. I want it to bloom, but uh, it put out a huge spike last year, and I'm wondering if that didn't kind of drain the plant of some energy that it needed. But anyway, uh, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing with this one, and hopefully we'll get some more leaves and even more flowers and a bigger spike next year. This will be blooming in the next couple months. Another plant that's in spike is this one. This is Oncidium speckled spire. And this is one of the first orchids I bought back in 2014. And uh, I bought it because it's a white you know, Oncidium. You don't see a lot of Oncidiums with white flowers. This one's got white flowers on its spikes. And the white flowers have nice brown little speckles on them. And it's got a really sweet uh, candy fragrance to it. So it actually has two spikes. I've been digging down in the new pseudobulbs to see, and I've found two so far. So uh, if everything keeps going the way that it's going, this plant should have two spikes emerging visibly within the next few weeks and blooming probably in two months or so, around March. Another plant that's going to be blooming for the first time, this is actually a Paphiopedilum uh, seedling. I bought this seedling in the fall of uh, 2014 and after three years of, of good growing look at this bud is pushing its way out that central that central growth there and that's super exciting Pafcalosum has purple green and white flowers and this is a species so it is a plant that you could you could actually go down to Southeast Asia and if you go to the right place at the right time you could see this plant in bloom down there so Super excited about seeing this guy bloom. It should have a huge flower. Um, just can't wait to see it. This plant's been trouble free for three years. This is actually the first time that my five Bulbophyllum plants are all in spike at the same time. I can't wait for them to all to bloom. This one is Bulbophyllum Lovely Elizabeth and it bloomed for it last fall with beautiful red um, inflorescences and that circular blooms that came out and we can see down here right at the base of this pseudobulb that it has got a spike pushing out the top there whoops getting blurry so that's going to be great and it's, it takes a long time f uh, to develop but it's definitely worth it this is such a cool bulbophyllum uh, over here there is another bulbophyllum I'm gonna actually change my camera angle because you can't really see the spike very well here it is. This is Bulbophyllum rufinum, and this one, it's got strings all over because those are the strings that I use to hang the basket up in the summer. But it is actually in spike as well, and you can see it kind of hiding down there, pushing out. And that spike will be blooming probably in the next month or so as well. And last but not least, this is my smallest Bulbophyllum. This is Bulbophyllum antiniferum, and it's got a new growth pushing out down there but it's also got a little spike pushing out. Can I find it? It's got a little spike at pushing out the base there and that'll probably take a couple weeks, maybe three weeks to develop fully and that will be blooming soon as well. Let's talk about my Cattleya seedlings. These are Cattleya Rex and I have a bunch of them. They are of different sizes but they're all from the same flask and they are in their winter dormancy so they are not getting watered very much they're getting a lot of light and um, they are just kind of chilling out this winter and recharging their batteries for spring growth I have seen some new roots starting to push out and so that could indicate that spring growth is about to begin uh, that's great because January is not exactly the most exciting month for growing things so anytime new growth is starting out that is a good thing good thing indeed as far as my other slipper orchids they all seem to be doing well uh, about a month ago I repotted these two this is Path Bell Royale on the right and Path Prime Child on the left and you can see they are starting to put out some new growth you can see that little growth pushing out there and Path Bell Royale, you can see kind of peeking up behind there. It's got two new growths as well. And both of these have fat bases, bases of the leaves. So that is making me think that in the next couple months, 
we might see some spikes pushing out of them. A couple more multifloral paths that I have. These are both path Michael Kopovitz. And this one actually bloomed in the spring. Had a wonderful, uh, I think there were three flowers on it. Now this one, however, bloomed two years ago, around Christmas time and it had very unusually pale yellow flowers for this hybrid so I'm very interested to see this plant bloom again uh, I'm expecting it to bloom this year and uh, I'm going to be interested to see if it has the same colors again because if it does um, that's going to be kind of exciting because that means this is a kind of unusual variety of this hybrid my other slippers are kind of hiding out here against the corner against the wall this is a multifloral here. This is Paphloei, and it is a seedling, so I'm not expecting blooms on it anytime soon. But this one I bought as a seedling uh, a couple years ago, and this is Path Magic Lantern. Wonderful name for this path, and it it may be blooming this year. I don't want to make any promises, but it it very well may be blooming this year. Another one that may bloom this year is Path Annabelle Shen. Um, it bloomed a couple years ago, and uh, it's good, completed two new growths since then. So, you know, when those growths are completed, it's time to start looking for buds. Path Villosum was over-fertilized a couple years ago and was really set back. You can see the black leaves at the base of the plant. Those were the result of nitrogen burn. So, it's been set back, but it's got a new growth on it and it seems to be recovering nicely. And if I'm lucky, uh, the old growth will bloom this year while the new growth uh, continues to grow on. We will see. And finally down here, this is a multifloral path, but it is kind of in a uh, recovery stage. This is path Angel Hair, Angel Hair by Colosand and it uh, had some issues with rot last year. So this is a new growth that's come out. It's got new root, uh, roots pushing out, so uh, hopefully it will recover. Now this big grassy monster is Max tenuifolia, the coconut orchid. Uh, last time you guys saw this, it was in full bloom outside. It's a summer bloomer, covered in red, fragrant flowers, and in the winter, it really doesn't get a whole lot of special care. It just sits here. Um, I rotate it every couple weeks so that all different sides of the plant get exposed to the light. And I water it every day. It's in this basket of, um, I believe it's coconut fiber with no medium in there really. It's just kind of sitting in that coconut fiber and the, the roots really, really seem to like that. And uh, I'll just keep uh, doing this until the weather gets nice. I can take it outside and uh, it'll start pushing out spikes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep it this size. Uh, it's so big, I might actually split it in two or three pieces in the spring, and if that happens, uh, I will let you guys know so that uh, you can own a piece of this plant as well. You can kind of overlook this plant, but this is one of my uh, favorite uh, Oncidium species. This is Maculatum and uh, it was hit by a hailstorm a couple years ago so the bulbs look a little bit beat up but it has a new bulb this year right there in the foreground and if we're lucky in the next month or so we might see a spike pushing out of that if not hopefully we'll see some new growth on it but this one produces long spikes with big beautiful waxy brown flowers and they have a lovely tropical fruit fragrance very very nice This tiny little guy is Amiciella monticola, and this plant is in spike. Last year it bloomed for us, and you got to see the wonderful white flower of this plant, which is larger than the plant itself. The flowers are huge on it. Um, with any luck, the spike will produce more than one flower this year, but it looks like there's already one bud on there, and I am happy with just one. They are such nice flowers. You can see where I cut out the side of the pot, uh, so as to not disturb the spike as it pushed its way out. It's also got a new leaf growing in there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right there you can see that little new leaf pushing out in the middle. So um, everything looks decent. This plant didn't get a lot uh, enough uh, moisture this summer 
and that caused some scorch on the leaves as you can see there but it's recovering I've watered every day now I uh, keep it very very moist and it seems to be doing all right this little guy is my Japanese wind orchid this is Neophenetia falcata also known as Vanda falcata and one cool thing about these plants is that they actually go ahead and start pushing out their bloom spikes the year before they actually bloom and if you look carefully right in that little crevice there let's see if we can focus on it you can see that the um, bloom spike is starting to push out you see those little little hairs little pieces pu pushing out there in the middle and that will actually be the bloom spike uh, but that won't start pushing out until May and that usually blooms in June, July, or at least it has the past couple years and that just has the most charming white flowers with a lovely evening fragrance well guys if you've been wondering where I have been I have been on Instagram since August actually and I really like Instagram because you you know it takes no time at all to take a picture and to upload it and write a caption versus video where you have to you know film you have to sometimes make a voiceover track then you have to edit and then you have to you know process the edited film and then put it together and upload it on YouTube and it takes a long time so, uh, with Instagram it's it's pretty much instant <laughs> hence the name Instagram uh, so if you're interested in, in following me there you will find me under the handle my green pets of course and uh, hope to see you there as far as the YouTube channel I'm still here I'm still I've still got tons of ideas uh, to explore on here it's just a matter of uh, prioritizing and figuring out what my projects are going to be and then get to work on them but I appreciate you guys for sticking with me I really appreciate those of you who have sent me messages asking where I'm where I am what I'm doing uh, I'm still here so remember you can find me here on YouTube you can find me on Facebook if you search for my green pets there and you can find me on Instagram I try to post at least two or three times a week on Instagram so there's lots of ways to get in touch if you would like to stay in touch with me and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for stopping by. This is William Green, and these are my green pets. See you guys.